When you think of Hawaii, you think maybe a little Jay Alvarez, Alexis Ron. <laughs> maybe those deep Instagram captions talking about souls. That video, You by Claire Michelle vibes. Or maybe you're thinking a little Cody Ko. Blue ass water. Well, psych. I've been living in Hawaii for over a year and let me tell you what you don't see. The homelessness, the poverty, the locals getting displaced from housing. And it's because these influencers moved to Hawaii to profit off the land for their deep poems about their soul without giving anything back. This is an outsider's perspective. I'm not from Hawaii, but I do have valuable insight. So how exactly is this image of paradise so damaging? But first, I'm gonna give you some history. Hawaii was made up of volcanoes blowing up. It became a national identity until, as the white people do, boated their way over here, took over, and even erased the history of them taking over and said that it was a consented thing, that Hawaiians agreed to this. This is stolen land. Now to look at the influencers, I really despise that word. On one side, you have Hannah Maloge and friends who moved to Hawaii showing off this Hawaiian life. They're exploring with friends, swimming in the ocean. There's a lot of beach pics. The likes on their photos and videos have increased significantly since moving here. On the other side, you have these influencers who love to talk about their spiritual journey, you know, finding themselves. Their posts are a lot of poetry and being naked in a forest. And it's often that both these types of influencers never acknowledge their privilege. They never disclose how it is they're able to afford living in the most expensive place in the US. You have to wonder what it costs to be so free. Around $40 an hour on Oahu. In the very few cases that the influencers do disclose how they're making this money, they credit their spirituality for knowing that they're on the right path. For example, Claire Michelle talks about how she was homeless in LA and how it all happened to work out in the end because she had faith. I was only able to come here because I allowed my own truth to surface. An influencer being homeless is very different from an average person being homeless. I was sobbing on the phone with my mom in this little cafe at night and I was like, mom, I don't know what to do. And my mom was like, you can always go and stay in a hotel. And I was just like, <laughs> like, I don't want to have to stay in a hotel. Hotel. You didn't manifest your way to Hawaii. You're just privileged. They have connections. They have fans. They have sponsorships. Yet they preach about their spirituality to young followers who might just quit their jobs and move to Hawaii, thinking that they have the same outcome without knowing how much money it actually takes to live here. And it's no secret they're able to make this money because we want their lifestyle. Who doesn't want to spend the whole day naked in a forest so free, hammocking on, a, on the beach, drinking from a coconut, hanging out with their model friends? It's ironic, it's captivating, and so unrealistic. With spirituality, I'm not yucking their yum. It is a beautiful thing to get into. But it is the adorning spirituality as an accessory to further fabricate this exotic paradise, selling it as an affordable lifestyle, which is only affordable to them by doing just that. But it goes much deeper than just affecting their followers. You'd think the romanticized image at least brings in tourists. And while that is true, tourism has never benefited the people. Native Hawaiians continue to be the poorest of all people in Hawaii. Every major hotel is owned by foreign investors, Hawaiian communities who have lived for generations in a valley or alongside a river are kicked out of their literal homes because of a proposed golf course or hotel. Whose paradise is it really? Not to mention, Hawaii is of the most racially diverse states in the US, yet the influencers profiting from this are mostly white. When I first came to Hawaii, I thought my problems would just disappear, like I was supposed to find myself or something. But upon arrival, my expectations were not met. 
Where were my model looking besties to surf with? Where was my cliffside yoga? I felt guilty for being sad because I was supposed to be in this paradise and I felt guilty for being happy at times because of the homelessness no one acknowledged. I had this egocentric way of looking at Hawaii that it was supposed to offer me some eternal bliss, but a place is only a place. Paradise, the image of paradise, is colonization. To perpetuate paradise is a colonial tool that essentially makes people like feel okay about coming to Hawaii and okay about supporting fantasy. Because to claim a paradise is to negate oppressive components to the island identity. Essentially, it's, it's wiping out all of those narratives to say like, no, 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 it's perfect here. That in itself is colonistic. And it doesn't do justice to how beautiful and complex a place like Hawaii can be. And so I think like tourists, it's kind of like a toxic relationship. Like if you continue to say like, oh, you know, my relationship's still in the honeymoon phase, da 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 You're like, okay, but like, then are you really in love? You know, like, cause if you don't like have a fight at some point in your relationship, it's not gonna constitute any reality to it, you know? This image of paradise the influencers have built their brand on, their careers on, it's putting responsibility in the physical place to rid you of all problems when the literal act of moving here raises the cost of living for people who got their literal land stolen from them where they can't even afford a house in their own home. For people who are at their like, you know, ends on the continental US, will spend their last bit of money to come to Hawaii because Hawaii is the easiest place to be homeless. You know, that makes sense where Hawaii doesn't have four seasons. You know, you don't have to worry about freezing to death in Hawaii. A lot of people from the mainland, they're also just stuck here. They came here not realizing the affordability issues, safety issues and what sort, and they just couldn't make it, so now they're stuck. The rent is really expensive and the food's really expensive. Um... And also, there are so many Native Hawaiians who are homeless, sadly, because of their not, them not getting their owed indentured land. Yo, that's like the most perfect angle I've ever seen. When I finally made friends in Hawaii, I became the person I hated so much. I was finally able to recreate this image of paradise, and it's because I had people in my life that I could recreate these experiences with, and it was so easy to contribute to, because, well, it is a very beautiful place. It was all over my Instagram, exploiting the land to show off my life. I think as humans, we've always seen nature as like what it can offer us, that's what really created the image of paradise, is that one, it brings in money, and two, fulfills our ego. I mean, that's like the same thing. Which is why I love that in Dane's artwork, the two dots stick out as the eyes of the land. So instead of looking at it, it's looking at you. So how can we appreciate Hawaii? I'm not gonna say like, I don't have friends who come and visit. It's really nice to come to Hawaii. It is beautiful, it's a beautiful place. But now more so when people come, I'm like, you know, go to a museum, look at and learn about what atrocities were committed so you could be indulging in the sun today. And if that changes your relationship to your vacation, I, you know, that means that it's real. If you are making the land a part of your brand, where you are making money, you should be giving back. You should be at least bringing awareness. A lot of influencers that I like who live here, they incorporate culture into their videos. If you put a flower on the left side, that means you are taken, and then a right side if you are single. They even have videos like taking that time to understand a different culture. It is the easiest and most effective thing you can do at the same time. So if you're an influencer and you're not doing that, it's like, wh why? This is the thing I love is that on TikTok especially, when someone does a vlog about packing up and moving to Hawaii, the Hawaii community just goes for it. They're like, you know what? This is horrible. You are perpetuating, you know, all these things. And I think it's important to show up, to show up like that because it's basically 
people saying, you know what? Yes, we were colonized, but we're not going to stand for that anymore. You know, and that statement of reality and checking in on that, I think, is very, very important. Just moving forward, even in the tourism industry, like I'm not saying that it should still prosper, but if it were to, in good conscience, cannot profit off of paradise. When the primary means of promotion is dependent upon a culture and people, and the perception that all is well in paradise is put forward, while in fact all is not well, then the issue becomes one of cultural prostitution. It becomes the selling of an artificial cultural image that has complete disregard for the truth at the expense and pain of Native Hawaiians who are struggling to survive. The image of paradise is the oppression of Native Hawaiians. It is at this expense that influencers thrive. Blue ass water and deep talk about souls is free marketing for the tourism industry to further oppress Native Hawaiians. Start calling people out on their bullshit. Be aware of the image you're producing and consuming, especially if you travel here and live here. And I'm going to leave you with a quote from Dane's artwork that really stuck with me. A home is a place we carry within ourselves, and Hawaii is merely a place I am a guest of. Thank you.